Hi everyone, welcome again to the course of structural biology. For a long time around 30 classes we have discussed about structural biology techniques. Now we are working through visualization. In the beginning I talked about that visualization is very important and in this module we are continuing with how visualization have developed to current stage. We have also talked about the PDB file which we have discussed in the last class of the cry electron microscopy module, how that PDB and MTZ files are being used. Today we are going to introduce a visualization software which is a visualization software, but it is much more than that. So, we will discuss about the visualization platform, the other parts it is offering us and how this could be used. So, welcome to the 3D visualization using the software called CUT. CUT is for model building, model completion and validation. So, it is not only to visualize, but to build the model to look at the level of process the journey to complete it and more importantly to validate. CUT displays maps and models and allows models manipulation such as idealization, real space refinement, manual rotation, rigid body fitting, ligand searching, solvation, mutations, rotamar, Ramachandran plots and what not. Kut is developed by Paul Emsley and Kevin Cowton from the University of York. Kut, Kut is the name of a small bird which I have shown in the introductory slide, but why the name come Kut? Because Kut stand for crystallographic object oriented toolkit. If you remember the history of determination of three dimensional structure of macromolecules is initiated and proceeded with crystallographic structures and could started with the visualization modeling of the experimental data, the electron density data we get into the from the experiment of X-ray crystallography and then we do the model building and could takes a very important role in that. So, as I told could is for macromolecular model building, model completion and validation particularly suitable for protein modeling using experimental structure determination data. Could displace maps, this is one of the very prominent nature of could that it help you to see the electron density map. So, could displace maps and models and allows model manipulations such as idealization, real space refinement manual rotation, translation, rigid body fitting, ligand search, solvation, mutation, rotamer, Ramachandran plot, skeletonization, non-crystallographic symmetry and much more. The latest table release of CUT is 0.9.4.1 which releases on 2nd February 2021. CUT has some features that resemble those to the softwares like Frodo, Tom, O, Crystal Views module which is called Crystal Fit. Actually, when we talk about them, it actually talks about the journey of where we are with the CUT. Frodo, Frodo is actually written by Alwyn Jones who wrote a first kind of graphics program while in Robert Huber's lab back in the 1970s, one of the initial visualization program. Although other primitive graphic programs existed at that time, Frodo was sufficiently powerful that it became very popular. It also sprouted several offshoots, notably Phil Evans version of Frodo and Christian Kambulu's version now called Turbo Frodo. Then come Tom 
there was some controversies actually regarding the program of Turbo Frodo uh, because Campbellow sells Turbo and rumor has that the code which he claimed about the ownership of himself is actually derived from Alwyn's original Frodo program. Alwyn went on to write Tom a Frodo derivative and Flo Quicho's group also made a version of the same program. Coming to O, O is the logical successor of Frodo and Tom making it the first appearance in the late 1980s. A measure of popularity of O is that there are very few computing program to do building models at that time. And it is not surprising that Alwyn named it O for his influence of Lord of Rings uh, to refer it to acknowledge it and you could get uh, O it is still valid and getting in this link. XFIT, XFIT is a model building and map viewing program in crystal view as I talked about it is a module of crystal view that is used by structural biology community including researchers in the field of crystallography, molecular modeling and electron microscopy. Among its distinguishing features are built in first Fourier transforms that allow users flexibility in map calculation using the including the creation of omit maps and the up dating of structure factors to reflect model changes from within the program. So, you could do the automated refinement and all. Written in C and using the freely available X view toolkit, it is highly portable to almost any X windows based workstation including Intel based Linux system. So, these are the ones which are behind. So, then we have coat could displace electron density maps and atomic models, allows model manipulation. We talked about these such as idealization, real space refinement, manual rotation translation, rigid body fitting, ligand search, solvation, mutation, rotamar, Ramachandran idealization. The software is designed to be easy to learn for novice users achieved by ensuring that tools for common tasks are discoverable through familiar user interface elements, menus and toolbars or by intuitive behavior like using the mouse. So, this is very important and it is also applied to any of the visualization software, especially to CUT and all which help you to do further, do manipulation. More you play, more you learn. So, though I am giving you the initial comments, I will describe how to do that, how to install it, but it is you who could have learned it more, even learned better than me as my students who are regular user could, you know, do with more efficiency than me. So, it is more you, you have to play on that, whatever I am talking about. Recent developments have enhanced the usability of the software for expert users with customizable key bindings, extensions and an extensive scripting interface. It is a completely independent system, could does not do many aspect of structure representation. What I am trying to say here, we have talked about different visualization softwares, in the next class we will talk about PyMol to make publication quality figure, there are Chimera, VMD, a lot of them. They produce really, really beautiful figures. Coot is not making beautiful figures, but it would help you to develop the concept, develop the idea so that you could make a good figure by designing it from CUT going to those other softwares. CUT is free softwares distributed under JNU GPL. It is available from the CUT website originally at University of York where the inventors were and now at the MRC laboratory of molecular biology. Pre-compiled binaries are also available for Linux and Windows from the web page and CCP4 and for Max user through Fink and CCP4. Additional support is available through CUT Wiki 
and active quit mailing list they are very helpful any problem you have you just mail them and you will get answers also if you are part of the mailing list you will see other users new users like you are facing problem which will be good for you to learn things which you do not think or you do not face the problem but others are facing. So, it is good to be the part of good mailing list. As I told the primary author is Paul Emsley, other contributors include Kevin Cowton, Brainhard Lokhamp and Stuart McNicholas University of York. William Scott, University of California at Santa Cruz and Eugene Crisinel, Daresbury Laboratory. Could can be used to read files containing 3D atomic coordinate models of macromolecular structure in a number of formats including PDB which we have talked in detail, which we have go in the format, go in the coordinates and understood how to use MMSIP. Again we talked about MMSIP and selects files those are readable files in CUT. The model may then be rotated in 3D and viewed from any viewpoint. The atomic model is represented by default using a stick model with vectors representing chemical bonds. I will show you them in time of demonstration. The two halves of each bond are colored according to the element of the atom at that end of the bond allowing chemical structure and identity to be visualized in a manner familiar to most chemists. Could can also display electron density which is the result of structure determination experiments such as X-ray crystallography and EM reconstruction. The density is contoured using a 3D mesh. The contour level controlled using the mouse wheel, I will show you again that for easy manipulation. This provides a simple way for the user to get an idea of the 3D electron density profile without the visual clutter of multiple contour levels. So, you just rotate the mouse and you will see that where the electron density is high and where it is low and all these ideas could be developed. Electron density may be read into the program from CCP4 or CNS map formats, though it is more common to calculate an electron density map directly from a X-ray diffraction data read from an MTZ, HKL, FCF or MMC file. Crude provides extensive features for model building and refinement adjusting the model to better fit the electron density like you have the electron density you are developing the model manually. Now, when you work manually you make mistakes, the mistakes could be corrected because could have the library. So, when you do the refinement I have talked about this basically this is energy minimization. So, it will push the whole structure towards lower energy based on the data of the bond, angle, dihedrals which are already they are in the library, the library comes from CCV4. So, could provide extensive features of model building and refinement and for validation checking that the atomic model agrees with the experimentally derived electron density and makes chemical sense or not. The most important of these tools is the real space refinement engine which will optimize the fit of a section of atomic model to the electron density in real time with graphical feedback that is what what I am talking about you have the electron density you build a model and then you allow the refinement it would automatically fix it up your errors based on the values which are in the library. The user may also intervene in this process dragging the atom into the right places if the initial model is too far away from the corresponding electron density. So, one there is automated based on the library, but then as a user you have sense and you could always utilize it. The functions of CUT is majorly distributed into model building and model validation. So, this is also what you could understand that though it is a visualization software, visualization interface is definitely there, but visualization is the least important thing. The part model building have majorly again divided into three parts tools for general model building where C alpha baton mode, C alpha zone, 
and all these how the helix are their feet, how the strand are there, ideal DNA, RNA finding ligands, all those generalized programs are there. Then tools for moving existing atoms, how we could do that. So, you have real space refined zone, regularized zone, rigid body fit zone, rotate translate zone, rotamer tool, torsion editing tool like chi and uh, other you know torsional angles and other protein tools like flip peptide, flip side chain, cis to trans transformation and all these things. Then there are tools for adding atoms to the model find waters because you have the electron density map and the waters are having represented like a spherical blob. So, you get it, you put water there, when you want to extend the chain, you use add terminal residue, add alternate conformation, when you see that there is the existence of two or more conformations and place atom at pointer, I will show you all of them when I will go to the demonstration part. In the validation part, there are lots of programs, Ramachandran is there, Clavid plot is there, incorrect chiral volumes, unmodded blobs, difference map peaks, check delete waters, check waters by difference map variance, geometry analysis, peptide omega analysis, J, L, N and S in the glutamine and asparagine B factor outlayers, rotamer analysis, density fit analysis, probe classes, NCS differences, pakka packers, all type of analysis would be available in this KUT software. How we will use KUT? First, you have to install the KUT software in your system. If it is Windows, then this is the link I have given, the exe file. If it is Linux, then the file would be available here. Once you have installed the KUT software, you have to open the tool KUT. In addition, you have to download as I told PDB, PDB is representing the coordinate and MTG is representing the map because if you remember, you have the electron density map and so a, a X crystallographer got the electron density map and then develop the model. So, the model would be represented in the PDB format whereas, the MTG file is represented the electron density map. You have to load those dot PDB and dot MTG files, I will show you again that and then you have to perform all the code based applications. So, in the today's demonstration, I would talk about protein, protein ligand interaction. But what I did, I tried to make it a story so that in addition to look at how I am using KUT, you could also understand how science could be done. So, what I did, I have picked up few structures of an enzyme called beta lactamase from mycobacterium tuberculosis. So, first I will talk about the background, why I have chosen them, what is my goal, what I want to show you and then in the next part as I told I will demonstrate how I would analyze those structures using the KUT software. So, as I told beta lactamase, the story starts with the drug called beta lactams. Beta lactams are drugs which are I would say mostly prescribed drugs by the medical doctors. It is kind of given or prescribed around 75 to 80 percent of the all antibiotics we used to prescribe. So, if you go to a doctor, you say you have headache, you have all other type of problems which are apparent. If doctor will give you three medicine, two of them have to be beta lactam. Why? Because beta lactam have the structure like that, penicillin is the first representative of the beta lactam which was invented by Alexander Fleming. You probably all know about the story, but what I would talk about is the chemistry. If you see there is a four membered ring, this is called typical beta lactam ring.
there are two things one if you look at the ring is a four membered ring now if you little bit put your imagination about biology i have talked about the biological macromolecules the protein the rna dna carbohydrates lipids you will never say you will never get any four membered ring containing compound why because there is a lot of strain so one these have a huge strain so that is something followed by if you look at a dla dla what is a dla dla if you remember in the gram negative bacteria they have layers of lipopolysaccharides the layers are independent if they are independent they would not work together and they are not strong so they want to work together and to do that they do so this is the layer of nam nags who are nam and nags n acetyl muramic acid n acetyl glucosamine so they want to cross link you know they want to cross link and the cross linking is done by a pentapeptide and where it cross links there is dla dla okay now so the enzyme which take part in the cross linking is called transpeptidase because the cross linking involve this dla dla in the active side of the enzyme transpeptidase they have to bind dla dla right and if you look at dla dla the and look at the structure of penicillin chemically these two structures are very very similar so penicillin work as a mimic of this and this binds to the active site of transpeptidase the enzyme transpeptidase here what is the result so first thing is because of the chemical similarity between dla dla and penicillin or beta lactams they successfully bind in the active side of the enzyme transpeptidase now remember i talked about the strain because of the 90 degree angle in a four membered ring when penicillin or other beta lactams bind successfully on that active side of the enzyme transpeptidase because of the angle strain the ring wants to open and the opening is enzymatically happened by a serine residue which attack the carbon of the beta lactam ring there happens a very very rare phenomena what is the rare phenomena the rare phenomena is the formation of a covalent bond between a enzyme and the substrate i'm sure you guys have memorized the definition of a catalyst and if you remember that definition you will understand what i'm talking about what i'm talking about is enzyme starts reaction enzyme makes the reaction rapid but enzyme never take part in the reaction directly so now you see an exception here where the enzyme is taking part directly in the reaction and because of that because of the formation of the covalent bond it becomes a irreversible kind of inhibition so now transpeptidase is arrested cross linking is prohibited it is not the date of the bacteria but the bacterial 
cell layers are not cross linked, so they are weak. Now, when they are getting exposed to the hypotonic environment, because the last layers are not strong, the membrane bulges out as water diffuses in the cell, the cell lies and then bacteria dies. So, this is a phenomenal mechanism and that is why as I told beta lactams are mostly prescribed drug. So, now you think what is the relation of this beta lactams with coat I am coming. So, as I told beta lactams as antibiotic was wonderful. In World War I, the death rate from bacterial pneumonia was around 18 percent when we do not have beta lactams. Then in 1928, Fleming invented penicillin. It was not even a drug he invented the penicillium and it was given like the fungus are grown and then they squeeze the juice coming and it was given to the wound. And you know how dramatic the effect is? As you could easily understand from first world war to the second world war, the ferocity of the war increases more dangerous weapons as are used, people have more you know serious wounds, but the death from wound which was 18 percent was reduced to less than 1 percent and that was the launch of the drug beta lactam which then and there got popularity and this is the first drug which got universal use before that and still now there are drugs or alternative medicines around the world. Chinese have their own herbal medicine, India have their Ayurveda, there are other countries they have their local practices, but this is the first drug the beta lactams which got universal popularity. What is the result of this popularity? I talked about the difference between the death rate of world war 1 and 2, but second it have created the concept of pharma industry. Today when you are standing in the covid era, you are seeing the fight between big big pharma industries making vaccines for covid and all these things. All those pharma industries were actually coming up with one or the other derivative of a beta lactam. So, companies like Marx, Smith Klein, Beecham, Danny Pan, Sumitomo Pharma, Novartis, which are big giants now, started with the beta lactam. In 1928, Fleming invented penicillin. In 1945, Fleming, Flore, and Chain were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology for their innovation of the first universal antibiotic and getting their mechanism. So, Fleming as you all know invented it, but Flore and Chain was from Oxford University, they have developed a group to perform the molecular characterization and that group have successfully come up with the molecular characterization of the beta lactam bring. So, 1928 to 1945, 18 years, you know, imagine you are the one who have invented the world's first antibiotic. In this 18 years, you have right any and every funding because pharma industries were interested, the big funding agencies are interested, you should do a lot of work. Fleming did not do significant work in between and why he did not perform 
he actually talked about that in his Nobel Prize acceptance speech. In his acceptance speech, Fleming very clearly warned that the overuse of penicillin might lead to bacterial resistance. The first time the world hear about the thing, the bacterial resistance. But you know, in between, as I told, already people have get the magic bullet. A lot of scientists trying to find a magic bullet against bacteria and they consider beta lactam as the magic bullet. So, the solution was there, the proof was there, the usability proof, I talked about World War I and II, the difference. Then money was there because as it became a universal drug, the demand was increasing worldwide. All those companies, it was said that if someone have invested one dollar at a time in the beta lactam related industry, the minimum profit was thousand dollars. So, money was there and automatically power was there. So, when activity, power and money all comes together, a poor scientist could not do anything. But it was proven that what Alexander Fleming thought in 1945 was very true and currently the whole world is under the stake of existence because of the resistance, the antibacterial resistance. So, there are different type of beta lactamases. So, they are included into class A, B, C and D and I have given representative that in the class A I have given SHV 1 beta lactamase, in class B imp beta lactamase, in class C the E. coli beta lactamase and in class D the oxa beta lactamase. The class A, C and D they work through the serine residue as the catalytic residue just I have talked about in transpeptides. Whereas, in the class B they have these two dots are zinc. So, they have mono zinc and di zinc, one zinc or two zincs. Now, in this demonstration, I am talking about tuberculosis beta lactamase, which is a class A. So, I am showing here the chemical mechanism of how class A work. As I told, they work through the catalytic residue serine, this attack when the another residue, the lysine, it is called secondary catalytic residue, it takes the proton making its own negative, so it attacks. This makes the formation of a covalent bond. And the type of reaction it is called acylation. If you remember, I talked about transpeptides. Transpeptides used to go through this step, and because of this covalent bond, they are arrested. Now, beta lactamase is a so beta lactamase is a improved, improved transpeptides. So, it have a second step it contains a residue called glutamate where the O minus attack and take the proton of a water catalytic water molecule which attacks and break the bond. So, now the beta lactam is ring broken now and we know that beta lactam's activity is because of the intact strain ring. So, in absence of that ring, now it is ineffective, but the enzyme if you look at the serine is free. So, the enzyme is ready to go for other attack and that is why the 
registration happen the resistance and the second step of the reaction is called deacylation. So, as a drug designer we always try to target this deacylation step we try to get small molecule which would prevent the deacylation step or at least slow it down. So, so it would be slowed down and then you have the penicillin or other beta lactams. So, penicillin plus this small molecule this is called combinatorial therapeutics. So, as I told in my next phase my demonstration you will not only learn how to use could, but you will also hear the story of a drug designing how we take help of high resolution structured data to go for drug designing. So, I am talking about some compounds these are carbapenems and these are penems the penems are the drugs we designed carbapenems are already established, but a lot of things are still to be understood and the understanding will lead you to the further innovation of more potent more novel new generation therapeutics. So, if you look at this portion is same they have this we call C2 substitution in carbapenem here the substitution is not there here the substitution is in different place. So, we are showing you how the penem and carbapenems are further investigated. So, as I told the story of novel penem the structure was solved and when the active site was zoomed you see to everyone's surprise there is a seven membered ring. Again if you go back to your biological macromolecules you do not get any seven membered ring. So, the development of a seven membered ring is surprising and if you look at the high resolution structure you will clearly see the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 the 7 membered ring is present and intact. So, how this 7 membered ring happened? Now, if you come to the original the phenem 1 the conversion from this to this this is a rearrangement mechanism. Now, if you look from the point of view of a bacteria they were exposed to this drug, but in the presence of the enzyme this becomes a modified drug. So, it is difficult for them to develop resistance and up to now this drug whatever they are used we have no incidence of resistance reported yet. So, this is one story I want to explain another story is about carbapenem a car novel carbapenem a new carbapenem which is called tebipenem. Carbapenem have a very interesting story if you look at them they have change in structure. But if you, so there are tebipenem, meropenem, doripenem, etapenem, there are others like biopenem, like imipenem, like panipenem, rizupenem, but you see the difference in KCAT, KM and also the efficiency. But when you look at the enzyme you will see that the this part is mostly out of the 
system and you do not get a lot of interaction with the protein. You understand what I mean? So, what I am trying to say is the C2 substituted portion which is different to all the drugs the rest of the part is same and if C2 substituted part have no interaction then all those compounds all those drugs should behave equally or similarly. But there are significant difference and I am showing this difference in beta lactamase from tuberculosis, but the trend is similar in other beta lactamases too. Why? Why this difference actually developed? To understand that what I did, uh, this is my work. So, what I did, I tried to make trapping of the compound before the reaction and after the reaction. You will say, okay, we understand after the reaction, how before the reaction? What we did, if you remember, there was a lysine which takes the proton from the serine. We muted that lysine, so the serine proton is intact and reaction did not happen. So, we get two states, one where the reaction does not happen and where acylation happened. So, they are actually very, very similar candidate to compare and when we compare between them, we see change in conformation. So, that tells us we have identified the change of conformation. So, this is an interesting finding for future drug designing because for a long time people wondering why those drugs are behaving differently with the C2 substitution when the C2 substitution have nothing to interact with the protein. Now, we see that upon the reaction there is a significant change of conformation and this gives a platform for further investigation. So, to do that what I use I take the PDB files of beta lactamase from tuberculosis APO enzyme like the enzyme where no substrate is there. Then BLASI the enzyme complexed with the phenem I talked about the compound with rearrange and makes a 7 membered ring. So, we will see that. Then BLASI complex with tebipenem, but after reaction and BLASI complex with tebipenem before the reaction. And we also take respective dot MTG files. So, the PDBs we have taken 2 GDN, 4 QHC, 4 Q8I and 4 QB8 you could go and download them from RCSB as I have shown before and you could easily follow what I am doing. So, with them I will take you to the demonstration part. So, this is the interface where you will see the use of coat. There is a other interface where all the scripts are also coming. So, there are two interface. In this interface, we will see all the changes we are making. So, you have file, then you go to open coordinates because we will open the coordinate files. So, we will go to the file and we get the PDB. So, this is the representation could is a very descriptive interface with lot of you know libraries and all. So, whatever you know format they are they always get some errors. So, we agree to correct them and this is the representation. 
you will see that as I told earlier in Pymol, Chimera, VMD, you will see much better representations. But CUT is what it would help us to function. So, here you get open coordinate, auto open MTZ, open MTZ, MMC, FCF, PHS, open map, import SIP dictionary which is a very good one. If you remember in the previous class when we are discussing about the PDB file, I have shown you the difference between atoms and heteroatoms. The atoms are made of all those standard amino acids, nucleic acids, lipid, carbohydrate and all water and all. Heteroatoms are what you are developing a new drug or something. So, whenever a new drug is coming, the library information is not present whereas, for a standard amino acid, for a nucleic acid and all the libraries present. So, you have to provide the software, the library or the dictionary of the new compound and that would be done by using import SIP dictionary. So, then there are other ones also you could directly fetch the PDB from internet, you could directly fetch the map, the electron density map and all from internet and all these things. Also, you have many edit ones, you could copy molecule, you could copy fragment, replace residue, replace fragment, renumber residue, change chain, uh, chain IDs, merge molecule, bond colors, restraints, map color, map parameter, bond parameter, skeleton parameter, residue info, background color, some of them have even multiple options and all. Okay. Then there is calculate, you could calculate a lot of things, you could model, fit, refine which is working with the model, this is one of our good handy tools, but then there are other modeling tools, you have SSM, LSQ, they are alignment ones, we will use them, mutate residue range, align and mutant, move molecule here, fit loop fit loop by doing Ramachandran help, fit loop by database search, map sharpening, blurring, map skeleton, NCS is non-crystallographic symmetry based maps, frames, scripting, you could have introduced script here, you could run script, you could do ligand bind, you could do arc and launch, a lot of options. So, you have this molecule, now you see that and it would be better if we introduce the corresponding map. So, we introduce the map and now you see this was the original resource on which the coordinate file, the PDB file was built up. Now, you go to and click anywhere you could have see them. As I told, when you start moving your mouse, you will see that the level is getting higher which you would actually go and see when you are doing that. You see when you are doing it is the level is increasing, decreasing map level, see it is enhancing the number. So, you could do them. Also, you could find mistake made by a crystallographer by looking at the map. Before that, you have to know about the map. The map is colored in such a way when this is normal, the electron density is there and the atomic model is correctly built up, they color blue. When it build up somewhere, there is actually existence of electron density, but you did not model it correctly, you will get green. When somewhere you should not model, but you modeled, 
there is a chance of getting red density. So, we call it like traffic. When you should go, you get green light, right? Here also, when you should put some model, you get green color in the map. When you should not, like here, you should not map it here, but you mapped it here, you get red. Like in the traffic light, you should not go, but you break the rule, now you get fine. So, here also the fine means you actually have a wrong structure. So, what is the possibility? If you look here, see that is the beauty of a CUT software sitting here looking at the electron density map. Now, you could imagine yourself not only as a crystallographer, you should actually work as a crystallographer. So, see here the option is Rotamar. If you click the Rotamar, you get a lot of option of Rotamars. See, the Rotamars are created in different places and among them something is coming here and this is one of the most possible and correct confirmation. So, the crystallographer made a mistake. Now, using CUT software, you could identify the mistake. That is the beauty of CUT. It is not only a visualization interface, but it work, it helps you working like a real time crystallographer. So, I hope I could make this point here. Now, I would show you some cooler things. One is interaction. So, let us go to the interaction between the amino acids. How to? Go to measure, go to environmental distance, set so residue environment, do not take bumps, make this distance around 3.8 or 4 and label the atom. Now, if you go somewhere, you see, you see the interactions, but the better thing is you could just continue it by clicking the shift bar now. You could click and they shift and you see the all the interactions. By doing that, you could make a tour of the whole structure without doing much, you know, work. That is also a beautiful property of CUT. Here, you get all those, you get the numbers, okay. You will see the numbers. You will also see the atoms like OG1. 181 threonine. So, the oxygen of the threonine 181, if you see, you could have read that and it have 3 angstrom interaction with a water molecule, it have 3.4 angstrom interaction with the threonine next and with the nitrogen backbone of the threonine. So, all of this you could have understand in that way. So, what next? Let us go to the one other structure. So, load coordinate of the PNM structure. PNM structure is there. Now, if you remember all the four structure comes from the same protein. So, they are same amino acids. So, you could have compare them. What to do for comparing them? Go to calculate, go to SM superpose and then keep the first one, the 2 GDN dot PDB and compare it like align the other one. 
the other one will move the GDN will be intact and apply and now you get the perfect alignment. If you see in some places you will get beautiful alignments. Now when you see the alignment, now the difference you are seeing in some places, they are really different. The differences are because of the small movement of the amino acid side chains because of the complex formation. So, let us look at how the protein interact with the substrate. This is the substrate. If you remember, I told you, see this is the 7 membered ring. This is the phenem. Here you see a 7 membered ring. Okay. Now, how it interact with the protein? You see that. So, now you see the 7 membered ring 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You see the protein have a lot of interactions, right. So, because of this interaction, you see there are changes in the position of the amino acids. So, that is what you could find how they are different, how they are interacting, all these things you could get from here. The another one, remember I talked about that if you see a green density, you could expect that something was there which was not model. In the, so this is display manager, in the display manager you will see all the structures. So, if I close the structure I modeled, you see that here there is nothing, but if I again put that, you see this there is a good phosphate. So, the phosphate was not correctly modeled in the first structure, the EPO structure and that is why they get a big green density. You could also see that the phosphate is moved, the movement is because the this phosphate is very close to the substrate. So, when the substrate come, it pushes the phosphate and the phosphate have a nearby conformation like the same position, but little bit moved. So, all these things. Another thing is if you have the you, you see sometime you do not get map for the other structure because the map belongs to the GDN. So, what I mean is you could move a coordinate, but you cannot move the electron density. Okay. What more we could do? We could do a lot of things as I told I could only talk about a few. So, one of them I could show you that we could do the mutation. So, what we have learned now? We have learned how to load the PDB file, we have learned how to load the electron density map, we have seen the difference in the map when it is normal, it is showing blue color, when it is wrong, it have either red color or green color, when something have to put somewhere, but people have not modeled it, it will get green when they model it, but it should not be modeled there, they would get red color, right. Now, we will see the thing which is called mutation. You all know who are working or following this course that mutation have a very big role. What is mutation? Mutation is the change of the amino acids. So, when you are doing structure,
structure understanding mutation play a huge role and here you could do mutations very easily there are two options mutate and autofit or simple mutate simple mutate you would do when you don't have a electron density map when you have a electron density map you will do mutate and autofit when you click here when you click here you will see that all the options are given suppose you want to do a alanine so you see that the alanine mutation happened now if i change the mutation again going back to tyrosine we have to get the protein molecule we want to mute it so mute it auto fit and you want to put tyrosine you will see that tyrosine appeared but if you remember the tyrosine was little different in position now it automatically adopt where the map is what else we could do we could show how you could use a rotamar like as this is here you want to get the other rotamers you see you will get 1 2 3 4 four different conformation of the rotamar we do not include it, we could also do regularize zone, regularize zone is you click into one atom and then you choose a zone who are connected and you click to the other amino acid like if I go for one structure it would be easier so you see that they are all covalently linked right so to do regularized zone you click here and then you click here you see the alteration the structure itself try to regularize and to do regularize it makes small changes so you will see that the changes which are observed here so if you do regularize zone you get them you see there are regularization in the bonds regularization in the angle regularization in the planes regularization in the chirals and non bonded interaction all type of regularizations happened you could accept it you could reject it okay also if you want to delete this you could come and do the delete option then you will get a lot of options you want to delete any residue or monomer you want to delete water you want to delete atom you want to delete side chain you want to delete side chain zone chain hydrogens in residue delta zone suppose you put water and then you click it would be deleted but this option will go but if you put keep delete active then you delete this see this is deleted now you could delete that and you could continue deleting so you could add alternative conformation so any amino acid side chains if you fill that it have two conformation you take add alternative conformation split all of a single residue or split
complete single residue at C alpha, you could take the choice and you see you get two conformations. Now, you could settle up in this conformation or that conformation or that conformation in any way or you could also do it manually. Okay. Now, I will bring the third molecule. You remember this one is the phenem. Uh, let us also take a look. You see here red density means it would not be there. It should be C. It should be here. So, you want to delete, you want to delete water, you delete it. Okay. Then you go to rotamar, you search for rotamar, you do not get, but you get the closer one. So, you accept it and then you could have rotate translate you could do by rotating on the x. So, x translation, y translation, z translation, x rotation, y rotation, z rotation or you could have another method when you are kind of becoming expert, you could push control, you could have directly push that residues, but when you are doing that you would be confident you would be a good user. Otherwise, if you are not a good user, you should not do it. You should take the help of the software as like see even if I was I am doing it for long time still I make a mistake and I did not accept it. So, in this way you have to keep working on and finding the better ones. But when you are working in a difficult zone of the protein, what I mean by a difficult zone of the protein? What I mean is when the electron density is not good, no program is helping you to do that, you are doing the thing with the help of your experience, then what it is advisable is in after minor changes you should go for a cycle of refinements, more you perform refinement better electron density you start to get. So, we have shown some of the changes, some of the factors like mutation, like a deletion of water molecule, alteration, alternate conformation, rotamar and all these things. We could also do other related things like edit backbone torsion, the torsion angles, you could uh, edit the chi angles, the side chains and all this you could perform. Also, as I talked about there are validation softwares. So, you could just go valid Ramachandran plot of the 2 GDN. So, when you do that you get in the preferred region 96.96 percent, allowed region 1.9 percent 5 amino acid in the out layer 3. When you do that for the another one the phenem you get 243 on the preferred region, 7 in the allowed and 2 in the out layers. Now, let us introduce the other ones. So, this is the PDB of Michaelis Menten complex of the Blasi Tebiphenem. Again, this comes in lighter blue color, and you want to go calculate SSM superpose, you keep. 2 GDN unmoved and you want to move this Teb MM. So, now 3 structures are together and you could see 
more interesting differences and all here. So, how to go to the where the ligand is? So, to go to the ligand, you you go to the draw, go to atom, and then you choose the perfect PDB like Teb underscore mm this PDB and then you get the chain. See here the residue starts with 41. Do you know why it starts with 41? If you remember, I always talked about a thing that the initial residues of the protein are generally not integrated part of the structure. So, that is why they are loose, loose and they do not provide good diffraction. So, it is difficult to solve them or sometime like here we ourselves cut out that portion so that we make our overall protein more rigid. More rigid protein means more stable protein, more production of the protein. This is also one type of protein engineering which we are going to discuss in our last two module. Here we are actually talking about those one is structure based drug designing. This is one of the perfect example of structure based drug designing and along with that we will also talk about protein engineering. So, if you go there in the PDB file you see waters are there, amino acids are there and in between you will see that there are phosphates and something which is not common. In most cases the not common thing is the drug or ligand. See here, this is Michaelis maintain complex we call it because the four membered ring is perfectly intact. Now, if I again introduce to the another one the tape C A and I do the SM, SSM superpose so that everyone is now in the similar position and we go again to the ligand now you will understand what I talked about if we go to the display manager and we put both of them out of the system, we only have the two tebipenems. You could clearly see that, and we could also bring the MTZ file of any one of that. auto open MTZ and so we get the MTZ file we close the MTZ file you see as I was talking about now you cannot align them because the PDB file actually moved. So, you could only see them with respect to the initial map because they have aligned based on that structure. So, you can move the PDB file, you cannot move the MTZ file. So, now again if you 
come back to the ligand as we were discussing, you will see that there is a significant difference in the movement of the ligand when it was unreacted and when it was reacted. So, as I was talking about if you remember we have seen the and also what I talked about you will also understand that this part is not interacting with the protein because if you go measure environmental distance you already have set up and everything is there. Now, you come here and you clearly see that after the C2 they have very less interactions. They have few interactions with the water molecules, but in actuality they have no interaction. So, when they have no interaction that proves the discussion happened in the literature that if the C2 substituted portion do not interact with the protein, how they make the difference? How different C2 interaction in carbapenem, in tabipenem, in biapenem, in doripenem, meropenem, etapenem, how they are coming up with different k -cat and km values? A lot of people have asked those questions, but there is no evidence of answer. But now, if you look at this, where you clearly see that for the one structure, the four membered ring is intact, whereas the other structure, the four membered, if for some moment to make it more clear, if I take out this, you will clearly see this now. Here, you see that this is intact, whereas this is broken. And when the ring is broken, you see this carbon is here, right. Now, this is very close to the serine. So, very interestingly if you note here there are three serines you see. One serine belong to the covalent bond. So, this is near to the carbon the distance is one point three seven angstrom which clearly says that this have to be a covalent bond, but the other two serines are far away. Other two belong to the complex which does not react with the tabipenem. Now, understand what I am saying. When the serine is interacting and forming a covalent bond, it is in one conformation. Whereas, when it is not forming, it is in two conformation. Why? The answer you will get if you look at here, this interaction of this serine, you will see that here there is a lysine. The lysine is holding it, whereas in the other case it is a alanine. So, because the side chain is lost now it could not hold the serine and then the serine is now flexible. So, this is giving us the in depth mechanism how the ligand binding change the conformation of the lysine go and hold the serine to a particular position and now the serine 
not only loses the proton, but become ready to do the reaction. So, this is not only showing us, but also giving us the mechanism. Also, as I told the distance, if you compare the third ligand, the phenem one, you will see that the phenem again goes in a different direction. So, those changes, those movements are really critical which was not apparently observed in normal biochemical analysis, but when you are comparing all those structures, you get the movements of those small molecules as well as you will find the movement in the amino acids. All those are complex when you get 2 GDN, you see that the complex one are in one place and the APO enzymes amino acid is in other place. So, these are giving you the introspective to understand in depth knowledge about the chemistry behind the enzymatic mechanism. So, in short we have seen there are lots of options as I told you have to play more to know more, but through this file you could have used PDB file for the coordinate, MTZ file for the electron density map. You could also use FCF or PHS formats. You could also import SIP dictionary for the small molecules. You could uh, perform a lot of operations uh, through edit, through calculate. In the draw, you could have draw a lot of views. In the measure, you could have uh, put distance, angle, you could have labeled them, you could have do the put a pointer to make measure the distance and all these things and in validate we have a lot of options to validate different things, we have talked about them. You could have used scroll wheel also for alternative view, you could have uh, used the read the header remarks if you remember. I talked about that in the last class in the PDB option when you go to the PDB there are a lot of remarks header and all you could have get them here. You could work with ligand you could isolate mol probability dots for the ligand, isolate could ligand dots, isolate could all atom contact dots, you could find li new ligand, you could jiggle fit ligand and all those you know formats and all you could do. Also you could get a lot of extensions which are helping you to get more options. So, that is in one word the preliminary use of could. As I told this is definitely not enough, but this shows you the power. You could have compare each and every water molecule, you could have compare the distances, the movements, the electron density map, the density is correct or not, you could become a real crystallographer, a real structural biologist working on a electron density data. But even if you are not having your own data, you could download the MTZ file, you could download the electron density map, you could download the electron density map from crystallography, you could download electron density map from electron microscopy and practice this part, the computational part which is a integrated part of structure development and only software platforms like could could give you as I told there are other ones, but in this moment it is could which is 
used by the entire community. So, I would conclude this session by saying the advantages of Qt, it is easy to use, it is powerful, it has smooth interface to external applications, but most importantly it provides opportunity to do functional analysis, facilities like model building, refinement, map analysis making Qt a real gift to the structural biology, biologist as well as computational biology community. The software has gained considerable popularity, it have already overtake the widely used packages such as O, Crystal View and Turbo Frodo. The primary publication has been cited over 25,000 independent scientific papers since 2004 proving the metal and because this course I have designed for the newcomers, the young dreamers. I would request you to download this software, use it more and more. It is not possible to understand or learn any software without practice in hand. So, I have given you some of the basic clues, but it is you who could do the best by doing more and more practice. But with that, if you have any question, please feel free to contact us. Thank you very much.